Hello and welcome to another episode of Modelers with their Modelers. I'm here again with BJ. I'm BJ, yes. Yes, thanks for coming in. What yes. have you bought with us this time? This is a figure of a ballerina. I didn't actually name this, this composition. That's, that's fair enough. But this was one of the first figures I actually tried airbrushing. Oh, wow. And this was also at a time when resin 3D printing was a fairly new thing. Mm. So this would have been, this is probably five or six years ago that I did this. Mm, 2017, 18, mm. yep. And so at the time I knew, or well, a colleague that was working here, mm -hmm. um, had a 3D printer and offered to print something. Right. So I went around looking for interesting files, uh, files yep. and I found this one. Yep. And it was just one of those files which you can download. Yep. Unfortunately, I can't find any reference to it anymore. So I don't even know how to um, credit the designer. The author. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, this is a very unusual subject, right? Because mm. you don't often see, you know, sort of ballerinas and in this particular pose as well. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's quite a contorted pose. It's super striking. You know, I can see why you've chosen it. It's, it's very dynamic. You yeah. Know, it's like a swan. But yes. So she's fully bent over. Mm. Um, and the difficult part about this was how to scale it. Right. So I wanted something around about a 24 scale. Mm. But when you measure prints, it's from usually from the lowest point to the highest point. She's folded in half. That's right. So yeah. we had to guess, like, oh, where do we print it to? Yeah, so I had right. to guess, it, it, I think it's, it's maybe 24th, maybe 20th. You should have printed two and chopped through in oh, half and propped her up. <laughs> straightened it up. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, the other dynamic thing is she's on her tippy toes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and she's folded over and I mean, yeah, I, I think it's really interesting. And, and it taught me a lot about airbrushing skin tones because as you can see, mm. she's just wearing a leotard, right? So there's a lot of skin tone. Yes, that's right. That's right. So I did a three color method. Okay. So I started off with a, a mid-tone. Mm. Um, so that was more of a pinky color. Right. And I tried to spray from one particular direction so that it was almost like, oh, uh, like the for, light force effect. lighting. Yeah, yeah force yeah. light it's effect. It's like, um, yeah. what do they call it? It's a, a zenithal style, you know, oh. where you spray the lighter colors from the top. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was coming from the bottom. From the bottom? Yeah. So, so the so lighter opposite. colors were coming from the bottom. So, oh, hang on, that was a mid color. So the mid color from the bottom mainly, and then from the top. Ah, oh, right. Okay. And then I did the dark ones, mainly from the bottom. Yeah. And then I blended it all with a lighter tone. Yeah. Which was closer to a, a very yellowy, you know, that really basic Tamiya style. Yes, the flat yeah, the, flesh. Yeah, the flesh that doesn't really look like flesh. <laughs> the flat flesh. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So it was more red tones and pink tones, and then slowly into the more yellowy tones. So you yes. can see there, there's some mm, you can. specific reds coming through. Yeah. And it's in unusual spots, and I try to leave those darker where it's um, around, uh, uh, say, joints, mm. so behind the knee and around yep. the elbow, where you would naturally find a bit more um, redness, and also around the hands. Mm. So hands in general are a, a bit pinker. Yes, yes. So is, is it unusual for figure painters to use an airbrush on skin tones? In general. In general. I, I think it's because... Actually, I don't know why it is. Um, most figure paintings you see around are brush painting. And these days I would brush paint a lot of my figures too. Mm. Um, this it, was an experiment to see if I could get it really nice and smooth because there was so much skin tone there. Yes. Yeah. I suppose airbrushing in this scale, mm. it is quite hard. Mm. So brush painting, when you thin the paint down, you can almost use it like a finer airbrush. Yes. And you can control it a lot more. Yes. Um, not to say you can't control an airbrush, mm. um, but just in this scale, you yes. know, if you're painting like a one to two or a one to five scale, maybe yep. an airbrush would be more suitable. Yeah. But for figure painters in 20th scale to 35th scale, mm. the brush is like more controlled. Yes. Um, and I think most of the people, well, most of the models I see using an airbrush for figure painting is mainly for the female tones mm. so i guess in, in respects female tone or figure is seen as um more graceful i guess and if you're painting say military figures yep. well they're pretty war-torn right 
So having yeah, the they, contrast. They, well, yeah, and yeah. They, they don't have like really soft <laughs> textures, right? You expect yeah. from their, their skin complexions. Yeah. But for something like this, yeah, it really made sense. Mm. And then the brush painted areas is all the black. All the black. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't airbrush any of the black, which is a black leotide. Or the white? Uh, all the white. The white for the, 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 the shoes. slippers, you call them, are they? Yeah. Ballet shoes or ballet slippers? Ballet One of shoes. Those. Yeah, yeah. And you can see the hard edge compared. Yes. Yeah. Which so is from very that. important. That's right. Very, very important. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So after painting the figure, uh, mm. it was a matter of how to display. So I made this basic um, display mm. base. Yeah. And, and to accentuate being able to see the other side, because I mean, it, it's, it's a shame because you can't really have this spinning. You know how there's a lot of those jewelry boxes and you see the ball ballerina spinning, right? Yes. So I couldn't do that with this because it's static. Yes. But with the mirror, you can see the other side. So mm. it's a bit dynamic. Also, it puts it in context. Yeah. And then I just built this little handrail. So that's scratch built. That's scratch built from a plastic um, rod. Plastic rod, yeah. And I think I used some brass wire for the uh, supports. For the supports, yeah. Yep. And what did you use for the flooring? Because that's really nice. So the flooring is actually um, timber. Timber. So it's mm. thin veneers, yes. which are normally used for ship modeling. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. So they're individual. They're individual uh, planks. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, and that yeah, really yeah. shows. You've like you've gone the extra mile to you know put individual pieces of like veneer and wood, mm. and it's gotten these this great three D effect in between the planks when you see they meet in the middle. Yes, so they got uh, that. They, they add a lot more texture. So there's a light wash that's been on them to accentuate the grain, mm. and also the grain itself lends itself to that really dull semi gloss, yes. like, like a floor polish that's been walked on. That looks exactly like a dance studio. Does it? Yeah, yeah. well, that's, that's the effect I'm, I'm going for. Yeah, yeah, so there we go. It's very nice. It's very nice. And it, it, was, well, it took me some time to work out the mirror because I didn't want to get glass. Mm -hmm. And I managed to find some of these cheap plastic mirrors, which are normally um, just double-sided um, taped onto a, a shower. And I've just cut it. Oh, right. Right, okay. So that's just plastic. So yeah. that was easy to cut because this would have been four times this size mm. when, I, when I got it. Yeah, and you've cut it down and yeah, that's right. done what you need with it. Yes, yeah. yes. So did you follow any rules in terms of composing the figure? Is there any rules of oh. vignettes that well, you follow? Well, I guess when you, you look at it here, right? So mm -hmm. this, actually she's moving around a bit, but this was meant to be like so. Yeah. Now when I look at compositions, I try to make them non square or right angle yeah so hence why i've got this angle here and the angle here for the mirror also is the viewer would normally be looking through this way mm. so it's going to give a, a different angle to the figure already right and then other thing would be the angle adds a sense of um uh, volume mm -hmm. so if you've got a square it looks like a small square box like a small yeah. room but like this, it looks like part of something much bigger. Much longer, much yeah, bigger. Yeah, yeah. And you can imagine, well, a dance studio, you expect it to be quite a bit bigger. Mm. And you've even got the, the poles or the, the beams the oh. sheared on an angle. Yeah, that's right, on the ends here. Make, give the effect that they keep going. Yes, that's mm. right. Yeah. yeah very so smart. the idea just to, to enhance the size. Yes. And, and that's what a vignette's all about, right? It's, meant to, it's like a snippet of a larger... Um, scene yeah yeah and then the face was uh, a bit of a challenge because she's actually got closed eyes so let's see if i can, can zoom get, oh. in a little more yeah how's oh i think i've gone too tight let's go back a bit let's go how's this there, there we, we go. go oh yeah she does too okay and ballerinas from looking at a lot of reference photos i have quite um i don't know specific makeup i guess mm. So in some parts it's quite uh, uh, discreet, mm. uh, but the lips were, were generally fairly coloured. But I mean, it's, it's fairly soft makeup there, right? There's, there's no um, uh, blush. What no. do you call it? I don't know. I don't use mm. makeup, so yeah, is it neither, blush, is it? But like the rosy cheeks. Yes. There's like, it's kind of a very similar tone the whole way through except in the areas that do need the contrast, like the nose, yes. the lips, and the eye sockets. Yes. You've kept it really simple. 
Yes. Um, in that tone. And if anything, the light from the room um, gives the effect of the shadow, mm. which is some, not something that you can do with like military models. No. Um, you're really looking for the depth through the paint. Whereas yes. for this, it's a softness that works because mm, it is right. lighter skin. Yes, um, yes. And yeah, 100% that makeup works mm. on the face. Um, and I take it you've just like made the hairline with paint. Yes, with that's this right. one, yeah, not molded. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I guess that comes from a, a bit of study on reference materials. Like you look at a lot of people's faces and, and I mean, that's still early on, but mm. you see how it's a little bit deep red around the, the edge where it, where the hair starts mm -hmm. and then slightly blended with a, a mix of the flesh tone and the hair hair tone right right so it gives the gradual effect yeah more so, hair. You, so you need you need it to be recognizable but you want it to to be softened in certain areas right so it's not it's not even all the way along the line it's sort of at, at points yeah yeah it'd be like real hair when it gets pulled back it's like it bunches right yeah yeah like and that was a that was a hard thing to, to try to replicate yes but yeah so so it's tricky too, because with the face upside down, the shadow's the other, other way too. It is, exactly. And it's a very unnatural way to be looking at a face. Yes, that's right. Know? So it looks quite yep. weird. But you fix this in place from the toe yes. with a metal rod. Yes, so that's um, music wire. Mm -hmm. So music wire was the only thing that was going to be thin enough and have enough strength to support a whole figure. Right. So the, the challenge there was to, to make her look like she was floating, like yes. have extreme strength like the ballerinas do have, right? Mm. And it's just been fixed on the bottom of the base here. Like so, so the wire oh, goes yeah. all the way through. And I've got a little bit of blue tech to hold it in place at the moment. Yeah. But when I design my work, I design it so it can come apart, so it's easier to transport. transport. Mm. So hence why you can see the wires there, so this can actually be all taken apart. Right. And I think I've just broken something. There you go. No worries. So, she just needs to be glued back. Without further ado, should we, <laughs> yeah. should we wrap this one up then? Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Well, yeah, yeah. thank you for bringing your model in. It's oh, ended on a somewhat ca catastrophic note. Oh, that's right. It um, just needs a bit of glue on that. Yeah, just on the toe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you. thank you for talking us through how you've made this wonderful figure. No worries. There we go. We're getting one last look. Yeah, that's it. At the upside down face. Yes. Oh, there goes the mirror. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Cheers, guys. All right, thank you.